Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. It is 2022. I hope you all had a blessed and safe New Year's and holiday. So now we are going to be getting into all things state board. So over the past couple of years and being a teacher and looking for content on the state board exams for nails, I had difficulty finding some stuff online. So I knew immediately when I started this channel, I wanted to cover state board exam because there's very little information on YouTube videos, demos, tutorials, anybody really talking about it from what I found. So I wanted to give you everything you need to know about your nail practical state board exam that you need to get your license. If you are a student, then you are definitely going to be interested in this. If you are somebody that's just dabbling in nails, contemplating going to school, then you can watch this video and take a look at what is going to be expected of you for your state board exam. Just know as a full disclaimer that I am a teacher in New York State. So I am going to be following New York State's procedures. However, you will find that most of the procedures are the same within each state. I think some states do have a nail art section, but that's neither here nor there. But for the most part, whether it's in different order, it will probably be like this. So please use this video as simply a guide. If you are in school and you have an instructor, follow your teacher's instructions, follow what your state tells you to do for your state board exams. But other than that, let's get into it. This will be a three part video. So we're gonna start off part one right now. First and foremost, what is a nail practical exam? So within every state, in order to become a licensed nail technician, you need to have several hundred hours of school. Every state is different. And then you will go on to take your written exam, which is usually anywhere from 50 to 100 questions. And you will also have a practical exam. During this practical exam, they want to see that you have the skills and the knowledge to become a licensed nail technician. So some of these sections will include your table preparation, your sanitation and disinfection knowledge, manicure, tip application, wrap application, and your polish technique. All these sections are graded individually. They're very specific how they want things. And once you complete that exam and pass it, then you will become licensed in your state to become a nail technician. So before we get into anything, let's just talk about some general tips on the day of the exam. So one, you want to make sure that you are on time. You always want to arrive anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes ahead of time of your scheduled exam. You never know what documentation needs to be filled out, where you need to be seated. You want to be comfortable. You want to be relaxed. You don't want to be rushing in and nervous on the day of your exam. So you always want to make sure you're there on time or at least 15 to 30 minutes ahead of time if possible. You also want to make sure that you know where you're going. We want to make sure we have the address down for the exam site. We know how long it takes us to get there from home, any travel expectations you might have. You want to give yourself enough time travel wise to get to the exam 15 to 30 minutes early, at the very least on time. Next tip that I have for you is extremely important and it is simply following directions. Throughout the entire exam, you will be asked to do certain procedures in timed fashion. You will never do, and the number one tip I give my students, do nothing more, nothing less. Do exactly what they say. There's a rule that you always say, you have the right way, you have the teacher or the school's way, and then there's the state board way. It's a whole different level. They're very tedious, they're very particular how they want things. So you always wanna make sure you're listening for directions. You are reading your procedures outline. You're making sure I know my cues. If I'm supposed to stop here and wait for the proctor to come over to my table, know your cues. So always listening, paying attention, and making sure that you're following directions throughout the entire exam is crucial. Some rules at the exam that you might come across are not talking. We don't want to talk to other participants, whether you're sitting next to an, a classmate, a friend of yours, whomever. I can't tell you how every state test is going to be. I know way, way, way back in the day when I took my exam, it was kind of like a long table and all the texts were on one side, all of our models were on the other side. And that was it. The next advice I always give my students is never look at the person to the left or the right of you because you don't know who's doing the right thing or the wrong thing. You follow your instincts and do what you were told to by your instructor and what you prepare for. So don't ever look at someone to the left and say, oh, well, she's, she's cutting her tip. Should I do that? 
stay focused and just don't follow anybody else's lead. Don't talk to anybody and listen. Loaning and borrowing supplies from other people. I will show you what will be required of you for this exam, what to pack and how to pack it. You should not be forgetting anything. You should always be extra prepared. You should not be borrowing anything. You're not loaning anybody anything. I don't care if they're your friend and they forgot their cuticle pusher. That is their problem. Sorry, because that can get you in trouble as well. You're not going to jeopardize your exam, your time, your career on somebody else and their lack of responsibility. So never loan or borrow any supplies from any other participant during the exam. And more recently, we always want to make sure we're safe. So that means having our mask on at all times, gloves when needed. You always just want to make sure you're very sanitized, very cautious of your health and safety during the exam because they are looking for that as well. That is a big thing with the state boards. So now let's talk about packing for the exam. So packing for the exam can be very tedious. I'm not going to lie to you. And it's one of those things that you have to do it. The better you prepare yourself, the better off you'll be during the exam, I promise you. It seems very particular how they want things, but they want it this way for a reason. So what we're going to do is we're going to pack according to the procedure. I will show you how we will pack for each section. You're gonna have mini kits assembled that's gonna cover each procedure. Therefore, throughout the exam, you're not shuffling through all your stuff and all these bags. You're gonna look organized, you'll be professional, and you're just gonna take out the kit that you need for that particular session section, and all your supplies will be in there. We always wanna make sure that our implements and supplies are on hand. We don't wanna forget anything. I have created a checklist for packing for you, so you'll find the link in the description box below, along with the general supplies and along with the manicure section that we'll go over in video one. So all these videos that I'm gonna create, I have created free documents for you. So just click the link in the description box below and you can download that for free and you can have your checklist to make sure that you don't forget any of your supplies or anything for your exam. We also wanna make sure that we pack every single thing that they say on the list. If they tell you to bring two pair of gloves, we're gonna pack two or three. What we don't wanna do is over pack. Remember that you have to travel, whether you're driving or not, you still have to lug this bag in. And again, we don't necessarily know the space of the exam. So I don't wanna show up with this suitcase and then if I'm stuck sitting next to someone, I don't really have space to even go through my things. So we always wanna pack minimally and smart. So we wanna, they tell us to bring two to three pairs or something, that's all I'm gonna bring. I'm not gonna bring a whole box. I had a student once that brought a whole first aid kit. She brought a whole kit that was this big. And I'm like, they tell you to bring two to three band-aids. You don't need a whole first aid kit. It's unnecessary. So we're going to pack according to what the supply list tells us. Another thing is always make sure that your stuff is in good condition. We're not gonna show up with dirty towels. We're not gonna show up with rusted implements. That doesn't mean going out and purchasing things, but if you don't have these things in possession, then yes, you should go out and purchase them. But if you do have implements that are in good condition, meaning no rust or debris or anything on that, we wanna make sure everything is clean. They are looking at these things. So we make sure that towels are clean. White towel is white. It doesn't have polish stains on it. We just wanna look very professional throughout the entire exam. When it comes to labeling your supplies, everything for your state board exam should be in the original packaging and container, especially your odorless products. Those things need to be unopened. And we'll get into that when we talk about the acrylic section of the exam. If for whatever reason, something that you're using, let's say acetone, is not in the original bottle because all you had was a big bottle, then you are allowed to put it in a smaller container, but it must be labeled pure acetone. So you can use a label maker or you can write on it. However, they prefer if everything was in the original label and packaging. For your trash bag during the exam, you will have a bag that you will be using, a Ziploc bag that you will have to label disposables or trash. So it's very important that you have that on hand and make sure that every single thing is labeled. You will find on your state's licensing site, if you find the nail practical exam, there is usually a supply list as well as a procedure list. It tells you all of these things on that supply list. Study that list, look at that list. They're very particular. So we wanna make sure that everything is very clearly labeled. For your contaminated implements, once we complete the manicure section, so we will arrive with it in a clean implements 
bag, but then it will leave in a dirty implements bag. So again, I will show you, but you wanna make sure that it is labeled clean when we arrive inside that bag and it goes out into the dirty bag and all the stuff we use during each procedure goes into, again, the labeled trash bag. So now that we've gone over the packing and general tips, I'm going to show you laid out everything that you will need for the state board exam, how everything should be labeled before I go ahead and bag it up and show you how to pack. So to begin for the state board, we're gonna have a bag that is gonna be labeled preparation of work area. So this is going to include everything we need to sanitize our table. So we have Lysol wipes that we can use in the original container, some spare paper towel, a uh, white towel, alcohol pads, a bag for your disposables, label disposables, a couple of alcohol preps pads, and then we have a table lamp if you choose. So this is optional, you don't have to, but you can use, uh, you should bring an extension cord if you do decide to use a table lamp. Then we move over to our general supplies. So for our general supplies, these are things that we're gonna need generally for the exam. So you wanna make sure this is maybe your largest bag, or I have these, these are about a gallon size bag, Ziploc bag, and that's gonna hold the contaminated implements. Hand sanitizer, I have two bags that are labeled blood contamination in case of an incident. Dirty implements bag. My first aid, which is gonna include two gauze, two cotton balls, two to three band-aids, and a few pair of gloves. So we're gonna hold the gloves for the whole exam in here. So you wanna make sure if you are somebody that works with gloves or your gloves pop a lot, whatever. I know mine's pop a lot with my nails. So you wanna make sure you have enough gloves to last you for the entire exam. Again, we're gonna arrive with our implements in the clean implements bag. So for the manicure portion, there is no nipping allowed. So what I do recommend to my students is so you don't make that mistake, don't bring them. All you need is a pusher and a nail clipper. Don't even bring your nipper so you're not even tempted to nip anything during the exam. So this is everything that is gonna go into the general supplies bag. Next we have our basic manicure and preparation for further procedures. So with this, I have my manicure bowl. It needs to be a manicure bowl. There's no substitutions allowed. I have cuticle oil, lotion, cuticle softener, cuticle soap, or you can use regular hand soap, that's optional. My antibacterial cleansing spray, a couple gauze, nail brush. We want a dry towel to um, dry off the hands when it comes out the water. A water bottle that it needs to be clearly labeled as well because you are not gonna be allowed to get up. So you wanna make sure we have enough water that we can fill our manicure bowl up. And then I have a three-way buffer, which I'm gonna use throughout the entire exam. If you do have more, you will see some of these things do get repeated. If you have enough to spare for each bag, I would highly recommend that. And then we have a 240 file, which is good enough for natural nails, and then a 180 file, which we would use on the mannequin hand to prep it for the next section. Next section I have is the tip application bag. So for this, I'm gonna have a 240 file, 180, and a 150. An orange wood stick, you can use a nail tip cutter or a regular clipper. Your six, they tell you to bring about six full well tips, a couple gauze, and a buffer. So all that is going to go into the tip application bag. Next, we have the wrap application. So for wrap, we wanna have our silk and our fiberglass. And notice that I even wrote on it. So once they both come out the bag, I'm not confused. And I know which one is silk and which one is fiberglass. I have a 240 and a 180 file. I have my tweezers. I have regular nail glue I'm gonna use for silk my resin and activator that I will use for my fiberglass, a couple gauze, some scissors, and a couple pieces of plastic, which we'll get into when we use, when we talk about this section. Next, I have the acrylic section. So I have my acrylic brush, my odorless products. They must, 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 must be odorless. So I have primer, which is optional. They do tell you, at least for New York, that if you are using primer, it's optional just if the system requires it. So what I tell people is honestly, we're using a mannequin hand, so it's neither here nor there if you bring it, but you always wanna make sure your odorless and your, your odorless liquid and your monomer is there to use. And these things need to be sealed, meaning you are breaking the seal at the exam. So this is the only thing that needs to be new when you arrive. We're gonna use a spatula to remove our powder from the container. We're gonna use an eyedropper to remove our liquid into our two dappin dishes that must be covered. I have my nail forms, 
And then again, I have files. I have a 100 and a 150 file. And lastly, we have the polish bag, which I just have my base coat, my top coat, red polish, a covered dappin dish again, if I need to clean up anything, uh, some nail polish remover that is in the original packaging, and a couple orange wood sticks in case I need to touch up anything during the polish application. Part one is your preparation of work area. To begin, you're gonna take out your, your preparation bag and take out your pre-mixed surface sanitizing solution or your Lysol wipes or your barbicide spray, whatever you choose to use for this and sanitize your whole, entire work area. So we're gonna wipe down the whole entire table and then we're gonna just take a paper towel and dry that. Then we will attach a sealable bag for our disposables to the workstation at this time and set out the appropriate manicuring towel. Lastly, we're going to set out all supplies that will be required in part two of the examination for the demonstration of the basic manicure procedure and wait for further instructions when completed.
This is what your table should look like. Just note that all supplies should be to the left or right of you. No supplies should be on your towel. Part two, basic manicure and preparation for further procedures. So the first step that you will do, you will take your hand sanitizer and sanitize your own hands. Then you will shape all nails on your own hand with an appropriate file. So if you are right-handed, it's recommended that you use your left hand. If you are left-handed, it's recommended that you perform the manicure on your right hand. Then you will take your finger bowl and pour water into it. If you are using a soak or soap, you will then put it into the water at this moment. Then you will place your hand into the finger bowl to soak your hand for a few moments. After several moments of soaking, you're going to remove your hand from the finger bowl and dry thoroughly. Next, you will use a cotton tipped orange wood stick to apply cuticle cream to the cuticles of your hand. Just note that for the exam, your cuticle softener bottle should never touch your hand. So we have to place it onto the cotton tip and then apply it to the cuticles. Then you will push back the cuticles of your hand with a cuticle pusher. Again, you may use a cotton tipped orange wood stick and note that cutting will not be allowed. Then I recommend taking a gauze and just wrapping that around your opposite finger and pushing back and wiping away any of that excess cuticle softener. If you would like a full demo and tutorial on how to do a manicure, I will leave a link right here so you can go check out the full procedure on how to give yourself a manicure. When you are done with this, you will stop and then when instructed to proceed, you will perform the massage. So we're going to apply the lotion directly to the hand and give yourself a one to two minute massage using a minimum of two different massage strokes. I will leave a link right here if you would like to see my video that I previously posted on different massage techniques. So you can take two from that video and get the technique down and perform that on yourself for one to two minutes.
After that, you're going to remove film from the nail plate and the cuticle area of each of your fingers using a lint-free nail wipe or a cotton-tipped orange wood that's soaked with polish remover or nail antiseptic. At this point, we can take all the used implements and now place them into the dirty implements bag and place that to the side. Then we will spray the nails of our own hand with nail antiseptic. Apply cuticle oil and buff the nails to a shine that received the water manicure. Once that is completed, we're going to grab our mannequin hand that we'll be using and we're going to prepare the mannequin hand that's going to receive the advanced nail procedures by taking our file and just lightly buffing and removing any shine. For this, I'm using a 180 file. Remove any dust and debris from the nail with your nail brush and sit and wait for the next section to begin. All right guys, so that concludes part one of the state board nail tutorial. So stay tuned next week, we're gonna be doing part two, which is going to be the tip application and nail wrapped procedures section of the practical exam. Don't forget to click the link below and pick up your free checklist for general supplies prep supplies, and your manicure supplies. Also, I've created a whole new section on my website that has all the things and supplies that you need for your state board exam. So you can head on over to www.keishanels.com in the nail tech shop underneath state board and student supplies. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.